Okay guys, this calculator solution is to be used in conjunction with the video that is showing our solution for the AC steady state analysis of our problem. So the first thing we have to do is to create the directory because we would like to keep that problem in the same directory. So we press the tick mark and we press the alpha key to be able to access the letters and for simplicity we are going to simply call the directory S S A C so that's steady state AC and we press enter to put that name in tick marks on the stack. Now we access the catalog by pressing the left, the right shift and the cat, right shift symbol key, and uh, we put in alpha C and then we scroll down till we find CRDIR, create directory and repress OK. Now when we do that, notice it's created a directory. We're not seeing it right there because it creates it at the front of the list. So we press the white, which is the left shift previous here. Because these are all the other variables and directories we have in home. And we repeatedly press that. And there it is, right there, SSAC. So we press the soft key associated with that. And now we're in the new directory. Notice it says home SSAC and there is no variables in there at all. So we're going to create the variables now we need for our problem from Z1 to Z6 for the complex numbers that we had. Now we enter them just as was shown in the video. We press the right shift and the bracket key and then we press 8 comma which is the, the right shift with the comma 0 enter. So we have 8 comma 0 in brackets on the stack and we are going to save that as variable Z1. So we press the tick mark and we put alpha Z1 enter. So now we have the complex number and the Z1 and we press store. And notice the variable there has appeared Z1. So it be, we can do it much faster, we're just doing it slowly for you to see. You get accustomed to doing this after a while. Now the next one, Z2, is 0, 4, and that would be Z2. To enter the negative 2, we just press the 2, and then we press the plus and minus button, and we enter the negative 2. If we have them in the wrong order, we just press the right arrow and that reverses the two of them. And then we can press save. Store, sorry. We press store. Now you will notice that I only have four of them. We really only need four of them because Z2 and Z3 are the same thing. And Z1 and Z5 are the same thing. So we didn't actually have to create six impedances at all, but in your problem, you may not have the same values. But in order, a shortcut method of creating the other impedances is simply to put them on the stack and then just give them their names. So if we want to actually have a Z1 and a Z5, then we press the Z1 soft key, which puts it right there. And then we just have to create the name Z5 and store that. Notice the variables are not in the order we would like them to be. We would, whenever we create a new variable, it comes up on the left hand side. The new one always comes up on the left hand side. 
and we may want to order these variables and we want to have them in sequential order, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's no problem. We just create a list to put them in the correct order. So the once again, the right shift key gives us the curly brackets, which makes lists. Then we can go Z1. Once we've started the curly brackets, we can press them in any order we want. And pressing the soft menu key puts the actual name right there. So now we've got our list with Z1 to Z6. To get them into the correct order, we press enter to put our list on the stack. And then we press the catalog. We press O to select order. And then we press OK. And it disappears from the stack, and now our variables are in the correct order, Z1 to Z6. Now we need to create the combined impedances as shown. So we press the Z1. We press the reciprocal to get the reciprocal of that. We press the Z2. We press the reciprocal button to get that. We add them together. Notice it's add them together. And then we want the reciprocal of that. Now we'll need to save this as ZA. So once again, we press the tick mark. Then we go alpha Z alpha A. And we press enter and store. And lo and behold, it's created our first compound impedance ZA over here. So now uh, ZB is four of them that we have to do. We have to take the reciprocals of the four Zs. And then we have to take the reciprocal of that and store it into ZB. So that's 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now that really is a piece of cake because we just go 3, 1 over X, 4, 1 over X, 5, 1 over X. Now notice the 6 is scrolled off the screen. We just press next to get it the 6 there now. And we press the 1 over X for that. So those are the four reciprocals. So we repeatedly press the Add key to add them together until we get the one total. And then we press the 1 over X. And that is the actual ZB, which we need to save. So we go Alpha Z, Alpha B, and Store. And notice it's pushed this over, but to actually see the ZB, we have to go back to the previous menu. So we press the white, and then we're back here, ZA and ZB. Because the ZA and B are going to get created now, because remember the next one created is always to the left. So let's just do that for ZC and D, and then we'll get back to you. Okay guys, we're almost finished now. So we're just going to complete our two procedures here we are going to punch in the voltage here which will be 6 0 and uh, we are now going to divide that by the sum of ZA and ZB so we press the ZA and the ZB and we add them together by pressing the addition and then we have the, the stack in the right order we have the voltage now divided by the sum of the impedances under it so we just press the divide key and that there is our current marked I6 so we might want to save that so we press, do we really need to save that though? No, we just need to multiply that by ZB. So we don't really need to save that at all. So we just take the ZB here now and press it and multiply the two together. And that gives us the voltage mark V2B. And we want to divide the V2B by Z3 so we just press the next to switch our directory over and we have Z3 here already so we press the Z3 which puts it right underneath and we just do the division and that gives us the current I6 
One of the beautiful things about the RPN in the calculator is that unless we actually need to reuse a particular complex number, there's absolutely no need to save it as a variable. So we have the current I6 there, which we're going to want to add to I2, but we can now use the stat to generate our I2. So we leave the uh, I6 there on the stack and we put in our voltage 2. So this is our 2 volt uh, voltage source. So we have our 2 voltage source there in level 1. And we wanted to divide that by ZC and ZD added together. So we press the ZC. But you have to get you have to go back because we have so many variables in the directory. We just go previous white shift. Now you see we have ZC and ZD there. So we press ZC and we press ZD and we've got ZC and ZD there. So we press the sum to add them together, the plus, and then we just press the divide to do the division. After we've done the division, we have the I2, which is the total current, big I2, and we now have to multiply that by ZC, which is actually a piece of cake. We put the ZC there and we do the multiplication, and then we need to divide that answer by Z3. So we press next to go, to go, go across until we have the Z3. And then we do the division there, which gives us the I2. And once we have the I2, all we need to do now is to add the two of those together. So we just press the uh, plus or addition key. And that's our final answer in rectangular form. So let's, um, let's write that down and then let's convert it to the polar form. Now you will notice up here in the top of the display we have radians and uh, XYZ which is our normal rectangular coordinate system right up here in the top of the display. On the older models of calculators there were actually keys on the keyboard that would quickly change between rectangular and polar and also between radians and degrees. Now we can do that by going to the mode and um, selecting the things and things, but that's too many keystrokes. So what I have done and what I'm going to show you how to do in a later video, I've programmed the user keyboard. You see that the user keyboard has here a user in white. So I've programmed the user keyboard that to make, I have a small program which I'll give you, um, to make this change from radians to degrees, we use this key. And to make this change from rectangular to polar, we use this key. So I can accommodate both of those things because I want my answer in polar notation and I must have my angle in degrees. So I press white alpha to access the user keyboard. Then I press the YX key and you'll notice that it's changed here. Notice it's changed to R angle Z and then when I press here again and I press the square root key, notice it's changed to degrees. And when I've done that, notice what has happened to my displayed answer. My displayed answer has changed. Now it turns out that 0 0.707 is half root 2. But you can write it down as either a decimal or you can write it down as an exact answer. If you wanted to get the exact answer, you'd have had to set the calculator into the exact mode. 
Now one um, disadvantage of having it there recorded as 0.707, which is a long decimal for half root 2, is that we cannot see the end of the number. We can't see the end of the number here. There's a little arrow sign showing us that the angle has gone off the screen. Well, what we can do is just press the down arrow button, which puts it into the edit mode, and then we can scroll with the right arrow. So our answer um, in decimal would be 0 0.71, if you want to round it, or 0 0.707 as the uh, magnitude and as you can see here the angle is minus look at the angle sign is minus 135 degrees so we would write that now as since we're dealing with cosine and whatever we would write 0 0.707 cos 40 plus sorry minus 135 degrees thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we will see you in the next video.